Well, it looks like for those of us who prefer open source software and enjoy game development, 2023 has been a really good year. Um, Godot and Blender were finally brought together uh, fully compatible now. So I'm going to go in Godot, start a new project, and um, oh, what's a good name for this? Blending. I can't think of a name very quickly. Create a folder for that. Yeah, sure, that's fine. I'll go with forward compatibility and do project, um, do the version control with Git. Um, create and edit. So uh, while this starts the new project, I'll give it a couple seconds to get started. And I'll go into File Explorer. And where was this one at? Blending, there it is. Um, well, since it includes Git, I might as well go ahead and initialize it as a full Git repository. Um, open up PowerShell here and get in it dot. So um, now it is a repository. Um, there's the Git folder, all the stuff there. Whenever we're ready to stage files, we can just come to this top level and git add dot for the current directory and all the recursive directories. And after they're staged, then git commit. And that'll open up a text editor so we can um, make a commit message or the abbreviated commit message, all that stuff for Git. Uh, that's not really what this is about, but the repository, uh, the most popular, um, most popular software for version control is included. And the really nice new addition, I'm going to open up Blender here. For years, this has been uh, a preferred setup for people who like open source software. Use Blender to put your models together and then import them and um, start with the landscape. So add mesh. Oh, um, if you don't have the landscape button, if you go to preferences and down under add ons, you can just search for landscape. While you're at it, you probably want to search for sapling and that's trees. Uh, I haven't turned that on yet, but if you just search for landscape and hit the little checkbox, takes a few seconds to load that one in. It's kind of a big one. Then under add and mesh, there's a landscape button. So you can just add a landscape and a bunch of parameters here to set. So maybe we could go with um, uh, lake with lake two. There we go. That looks like a good little landscape to use. Um, so we've got a blender, blender model here. I'll throw some quick materials on this. Um, Make a material called uh, land or grass. Just something green to have in here. Switch over to material view. Uh, maybe something darker. Um, a little more bluish. I'll click around until something looks good. That That's probably good. I don't need to spend forever clicking it choosing a color. This is just a short video. And then this lake landscape came with some water, so I had a, a water material as well. Uh, which probably blue-ish. That looks good. So, there's a nice little landscape we could turn into a game. So, I'll go ahead and save this. Um, and here in that, uh, that Godot project, I'm just going to create a new folder right here and call it blend. And then I'll save this in here as landscape. Save. Probably want to name things properly. So instead of landscape and landscape plane, this is going to be um, hillside, no, uh, ground, and lake. Those are good names for them. Why is it not? There we go. Lake. There we go. So save that. And now I'm going to jump back over to Godot. And you might notice down here in my uh, task bar, the Godot icon has started flashing. That subtle flash that it does to indicate it's doing something. And when we come over here, it's already importing those assets. Um, no more cumb cumbersome exports. Uh, Picking the right format and all the right settings, usually GLTF, which is if you've never opened that in a text editor, is an XML file. Um, so 
got the landscape right here. So let's make this a new scene. Call this uh, world. Seems like a good name for it. And grab this landscape and drag it right up here. And you can see right there we got our uh, our landscape and it comes in with simple materials probably want to override them I like to add at least colors so the simple material is fine if we right click and hit editable children if we look at it extend our mesh um, surface zero there is a material here and actually we can um, edit the material well oh no it's frozen read only material so if we want to change uh it just comes in as simple material so we have to redo that um i'm gonna collapse all that maybe on the transform i made it really small in blender that default is uh basically one by one meter if we check the size um grab the ruler here and check we can see it basically a two meter uh that's a weird angle let me try from a different angle Looking straight at the top, we should see it's about two meters. So yeah, right about a two meter, two meter by two meter square uh, is what that comes in as. So probably one a little bit bigger here in Blender. So I'm going to go to scale and scale that up uh, 100 in each direction. I like to do that over here because uh, um, yeah, uh, lately I've been doing that from here. Either scale would work. Uh, lately, I've found that I like to do it small in Blender and scale it up over here. So scale over here, also 100 here. So we have our same model 100 times bigger. And we can do a similar thing for a character. So if I come back over to Blender, um, File, New, General. Um, yeah, save that old one. Clear all the other stuff out. And I happen to have a uh, script for a character, a starting point that makes it a little bit easier. I will link to this in the description of the video here. Um, I have it on GitHub. Actually, it's it stands out on the GitHub repository. And then the actual repository is for a whole bunch of animals. There's elephants and tigers and wolves and frogs and iguanas and a whole bunch of things. And it's set up to go in as a button. So you would install that. Um, just like that landscape button. But the add human one is a little bit separate because that's something we do a lot. So I'll hit that. And it's actually half a human. Um, so this is another nice thing. So if I click that, since humans are symmetric, just add half of it. And then we can click the little wrench and add a mirror modifier. So we get the whole thing. Select object, shade it smooth. Come over here, add a material. Um, I guess we should call it skin. Something skin colored. That'll work. Um, and save that again over in that right in the Godot project. Just created a folder or anywhere in there. Godot will find it. Uh, it will recognize Blender. So this is going to be our player. Save that, and when we go back over to Godot, again, it imports the player, which that little script starter file I had. So um, while that's importing, you can see it, just the basic shape of a human, and then you don't have to spend a long time getting the shape ready, it's just ready for the final details. Uh, cuts out some of the time, and the whole idea of open source is that we don't both need to do it. So I will link to that script so y'all can just use that. Um, let's bring the player up here, put it as a child of the world. Obviously, the player is a lot smaller than our landscape. So if I hit F and zoom in on it, um, okay, he was way up in the sky there. Came down close to the ground. And sort of that quick to get a player going. Um, we'll probably extend that with a camera and all sorts of stuff. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to add a quick uh, camera to the world, looking at everything. Um, 
add a child node, search for camera, that way we can see stuff. Camera 3D. Bring it way over here by the player. Preview. Whoop. And preview. Rotate it a little this way. Can we see the character? There we go. Um, then we hit run. Um, sure, I'll just save it as well. This is just a quick demo thing. Oh, forgot the light, but you can see that the uh, the player's in there. Let's add an environment to this. Uh, we could just add the environment. Yeah, I'll do. I'll just do that. Um, if we select world, you'll see this button up here. So there's the development environment that has some light and background and stuff. And I usually avoid doing that. We can just turn that on. Um, add the sun to the scene. Add the environment to scene. And now when we run it. We've got uh, a scene going that quickly. Now we're ready to just control our character and do some fancier stuff with the the camera and um, maybe eventually get to materials. But uh, the world and the character is in that quick in under 11 minutes. Uh, so Blender files right in there. We don't have to worry about any exports or anything. It's reading the blender. It's reading from the Blender file and handling all that for us. There's just two settings that you need to make sure set beforehand. So if you go in project, uh, make sure you're using at least Godot 4 point something and Blender 3 point something. And Blender's up to 3.5. So if you go download Blender, it's prob you have to dig around to find an old, uh, an old one. But if you go to project and project settings, under general, scroll down to file system. Oh, not collapse it. And then import and make sure that Blender import is enabled. Just hit the little checkbox. And if you don't see it, you might have to click on advanced settings, but um, just enabling it should be a regular setting. Close that and under editor, we also want our editor to be able to access the Blender files. So if you come down, um, go to editor, editor settings, and scroll down to the file management import again but it's not at the bottom this time ah oh, there it is so file system and import okay so file system and import um file something in both of them and then import in both of them and make sure the blender three path points to the right location if you did the default installation it should be in program files blender foundation blender 3.5 and then that's where the the blender.exe is. If you did a custom installation and put it somewhere else, just point to the folder that has blender.exe. Um, or on a Mac or Linux, it's the, the blender without the extension is the one that starts it. The actual, uh, might be dot application on a Mac, but the one that actually starts it, uh, just point at that and make sure that's set. And whenever that's set, you're good to go. You might have to restart your thing, but then, um, well, this video is kind of stretched out from the talking, but in 13 minutes, we had our landscape and character in. And I will link to that character starter file there in the description. And um, just real quick here, if we go back over to maybe the landscape. Um, file. Now, so we double click it, it's going to do it. We get back to the import options and all that. So we have control over that animations on the character when we get to it. Uh, let me open that landscape back up and maybe we didn't want that color. Let's um, say, okay, then maybe that that's not a very good green jump back over to the materials and um, want something more grayish. Yeah, there we go. So a much lighter color. And when I save that and jump back over here, it's re-importing and it brings those changes in. Um, if you do like a tri-mesh static from your model and change the shape, then obviously you have to regenerate your tri-mesh static, but uh, it's coming on 15 minutes. That's how long, that's the limit I wanted to make on the video, but you just, we're directly linked to Blender. Edits come over, edits in the Blender file come over automatically. So 
two uh, two of the by far most popular open source software for used in game development are now fully integrated with each other. Uh, so 2023 has been a good year for those who uh, like open source software and like game development. Just thought I'd share that real quick.